Okay, the practitioner here, Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, magician, parapsych parapsychologist, technical agnostic, and Freudian skeptic. Um, I'm not exactly a Christian, I'm not a Christian myself, and I am highly skeptical of the Christian faith, but still, just for the hell of it, I might as well try to post a devil's advocate um, argument, if only to help try to strengthen my own argument against them. Okay, point number one, um, debunking the concept of a loving God. Um, in the event that there is, um, you know, in the event that uh, one of the most common arguments for debunking the Christian God is, well, look at all the Old Testament stories. Isn't that proof that God is not loving? Well, my answer to that is, God, as depicted by the Bible, is an anthropomorphic being, a white bearded man up in the sky, omnipotent, all-powerful, and the like. But that doesn't necessarily mean that his mood is constant. If, it, if a God is a living entity, um, like any living entity, it would be subject to mood changes. Animals have mood changes, humans have mood changes. An omnipotent being could change its mood all the time. So, um, a God who's vengeful in the Old Testament and then starts becoming a little bit more open and loving at, at a later point, um, once he figures that humanity is ready to be forgiven for its numerous crimes or what have you, would be consistent, would be possible. It is uh, would be possible for God, uh, God to change moods. The second uh, question, why does God not heal amputees or anything like that? Well, the, que well, the answer, of course, to that is um, much like has been said before in some other Christian arguments. Well, God created this universe, uh, again, uh, assuming we're following the Christian faith here, God's God created this universe with a certain amount of scientific laws, created a certain balance to it. If God came in and healed every amputee, um, you know, if God came in and healed every amputee, then what would be the then what would be the point? Like it would be like tossing miracles out left, right, and center, and the laws of physics wouldn't make any sense anymore. Um, another thing as well is that I believe it's mentioned somewhere in the New Testament um, that a um, uh, what is it? Oh, frig now. Uh, I'm just trying to remember where it is now. Um, some there's a blind man walking down the road, and a couple of the apostles say, "Well, you know what sin was committed? Uh, you know, in, in this father's generation, that this man had to have a, um, you know, that he had to have an injury." And God said, "Well, it is, um, you know, it's, it, uh, it's, you know, He said that uh, this, in, um, no, it was not some sin by the father. This injury was put there uh, in order to show God's light into his life. Like he was born blind in order so this way something good could happen to him." Now the possibility is, is that. Um, Remember, people who have amputees and all that sort of shit, um, you know, amputee, um, amputeeism and that sort of thing, um, are given, you know, like it's possible that sometimes that somehow something else goes well in their life anyway to compensate. Now, this connects into the next question. Well, if God existed, or again, I'm talking to Christian God here, why doesn't God swoop down and solve all the problems like world hunger and all this sort of thing? Well, we ate from the tree of good and evil. And theoretically speaking, we subjected to original sin, but I mean, of course, Jesus forgave us for all that. But the point is, is that he was saving us from the sin, you know, from, you know, the chance of being able to repent from previous sins, from being able to repent and not, you know, have to have a chance at re-entering the kingdom of God. He also gave us free will. Uh, if we follow the Christian faith, God gave us free will. Sat uh, the similar argument would be, if God existed, why is Satan not destroyed? Well, how would people learn anything? Or be able to become good, or even you know, be able to enter heaven. Like, what's the point of that, of not providing at least somewhat of a challenge? If evil did not exist in the first place, you would have nothing to struggle against, and you would have you would ha you wouldn't have any way of trying to build character, uh, you know, learn logic. You know, without that, we wouldn't have you know, we'd be just a a bunch of mindless slaves worshiping uh, worshiping some god. But by having free will, we're somewhat of independent agents in our own right. And you know, I mean, what's an omnipotent being going to do, but provide a provide something that he can watch, something new, something entertaining, and by giving a, a sentient race free will, that provides a challenge for an omnipotent, uh, it doesn't provide a challenge for an omnipotent god, but what it does do is it provides him something interesting to watch and something to care for, um, so that's why he's not bored with all the omnipotent powers. Okay, now that I've, I think I've covered those arguments well enough, now for the uh, issue of um, intelligent design versus evolution. Um, well, if God existed, what about all this scientific evidence for evolution and the scientific evidence for billions of years and the like? Well, the answer I'm going to give to that is the fact that the, um, the Bible does not say that the Earth is 6,000 years old. Some bishop um, completely read the Bible in the wrong way and interpreted the Earth to be 6,000 years old. 
the Bible in um, verses chapters, uh, chapter 1, uh, verses 11 to 27, talks about how the earth was created. But it talks, but there's a couple of things which it mentions which are often overlooked. And this was actually brought up in the Shoke's Monkey Trial in 1925. Um, the first thing that's overlooked is the fact that the sun, the moon, and the stars were not created until the fourth day. Um, this means that before, for the first three days, there was no time measurement, meaning that it wasn't a 24-hour day. It could have been billions of years by our standard measurement, and the Earth, could, the Earth could have existed over that time period. The next thing that's not mentioned is the fact that the um, the uh, the book of um, the Bible also clearly states that uh, first the plants were created, then the sea animal, then the birds, then the animals of the sea and the birds of the sky, then the land animals, like all the la land livestock, and finally humans. That could mirror a very simplistic uh, description of how um, first sea uh, cells and then, you know, first sea life were created. Uh, sorry, first plant life uh, evol evol evolved, then animal life in the sea, and, the, and an offshoot of that became the birds as lizards went up on land. And a second offshoot of a while later came up and became land animals, and finally humans evol evolved out of that. So that creation could mirror evolution in a very basic way. The third point is that Second Epistle of Peter, chapter three, verse eight, says in most translations of the Bible, a thousand years is but a day in thy sight, O Lord. And um, uh, but of course, a couple of translations, some of the newer ones, actually say a thousand years is but a watch in thy sight. Now, a watch being an indeterminate amount of time, um, or even a day being a metaphor, um, you know, does not mean that that's a literal translation either. It basically means that uh, it's basically meant to be a soliloquy, um, uh, you know. A, a, if you will, an expansion to make a note that a day in God's time is, you know, a, 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 that we are like by finite beings compared to the omnipotence of God. Therefore, seven days as described by the Bible would be seven days God's time, but not necessarily ours. Now, the question, of course, is though, is that even with that interpretation, where is the evidence for it? Well, there is actually a comparison that we can make, uh, an analogy, if you will, that we could draw. Um, now, of course, um, actually, you know what? Let me get back to that analogy. Yeah, let me complete this analogy now, and then I'll get to the whole proof for Jesus' resurrection thing or that. Um, the first bit is the fact that um, there is a comparison between us being gods and God being a god to us. Second, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 says, Man and woman, God created man in his own image. Man and woman, he created them. In his own image, he created them. He effectively stated that man and woman were supposed to be equal. And remember that he also said that um, woman was supposed to be subservient to man because, as punishment for the original sin. But if Jesus absolved the original sin, then the whole talk about men and women being unequal is completely erroneous, which means that actually Christianity was supposed to make women, men and women equal. But anyway, that's, this is another side. Um, but the main verse says that effectively we are made in God's image. So therefore, there should be a level at which we are like gods to something else. You know, if we are made in God's image, we should be a reflection of God, and therefore, at least on some minor scale, be able to do what he does on a greater level. Guess what? There is something comparison which actually does uh, show this. Computers. We are able to do to command a computer to do whatever we want. We type in the programming, we do a point and click, and it takes a couple of seconds for us. We point and click, we tell the computer to do what it does, and lo and behold, it's done. It could seem like magic or like we had godlike powers. Here's the interesting bit, though. Computers... Break down, they break down their programming into a finite unit called binary digits or bits, and for every one of these, you know, for every one of these, um, uh, for every one of these commands that we do, that only seems like a couple of seconds for us, it takes millions or sometimes trillions of these, sometimes billions or trillions of these calculations, depending on the complicatedness of the program, to do what it does. Matter of fact, there are even programs that we can control as gods, like SimCity and Sim, uh, like SimCity and Sim Tower. Like there's, you know, there's examples of this already. Um, we can predict models of, of how the Earth would work with, you know, if we put in CO2 and the like. I mean, like, we can, we can control computers to do effectively anything. Now, here's the thing. If an individual bit exi uh, existed with its own lifespan and had its own finite unit breakdown of time, or a collection of bits, they could theorize, if they had their own life forms or their own sentience, they would have their own measure of time, which would be much longer to ours. They would, um, therefore, consider their lifespan to be short, and we would be as if, like, timeless, omnipotent beings to them. So, therefore, seven days for us would be several billion years for them. Matter of fact, there is some scientific evidence to suggest that this actually is possible at our level. Um, a couple of examples of this, or the uh, examples to suggest that the um, universe is a computer program, one of which is called the Universal Holographic Entropy Bound, which was talked about in the special, the 25th Special Edition Scientific American Report on Physics. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to pause this video, and I'll get to that scientific data in the next video, and then I'll explain uh, Christian re resurrection and all that jazz.